ecosystem and I would say a European size one? Yeah. Well, the first answer to that question, you might call it a silly answer to a silly question, but it doesn't mean it's not important. The silly question is important. Is why I worked on the Amazon for 10 years before I published a paper. Oh. Hmm. Um, <laughs> you know, I like I would be fired these days, right? But I was lucky. Um, so, and, and I faced the same, same um, question when um, my, I had a grad student called Elizabeth Safran, and she wanted to work on the issue of uh, the effects of tropical deforestation in the Amazon basin, like all of it. And so the, your question is, is perfect, right? How would, if you're a young person and you'd like to t work on a topic that's not only big in scale, but quite fundamental, uh, what do you do first? And um, so, I mean, I often, I often, when I give talks about what Liz and I did, I often say that Liz and I went out with a backpack and a, an auger, soil auger, to confront the hydrology of the Amazon. And so what do you do with that? And so, the way I do it, I don't know who else, whatever else does, um, there's, there's logistics, logistical problems in the background, right? So, so let me just say, you have to, respond to what I'm going to say next by then looking at the logistics of where you can go, where it's safe to go, whether you can get there or not. But I always take a large scale, um, kind of simple geographical view. Like I started out here, I said, okay, this is a big river, and so we, get, we know some simple things about the hydrology, right? It's going to go up and down once a year. That's going to make things simple. Um, we're working on sediment. There's two really obvious issues. One is, what is the sediment doing when it's in the channel? And I was working with a guy from the Geological Survey, the US Geological Survey, so that's what they're all about, is measuring the sediment in the channel. So I knew that Bob, me, uh, would you know be really helpful about sediment in the channel. So the sediment in the channel, and then the sediment was getting into the floodplain. So we've got a channel and a floodplain. So what's the, how do I, can I make that simple distinction? Well, the water gets from the channel to the floodplain. How does it get from the water, from the channel to the floodplain? You, know, you break it up into diffuse and channel, and eventually you kind of develop a very simple-minded uh, cartoon of the problem. Just like saying, like the second step was, where does the sediment come from? It took me about five years to think about that one. Right? Well, where does the sediment come from? Does that make a difference to this problem? So I, I worked initially with cartoons, basically, this sort of fo focused my thinking. Now, once I've done that, then I can address the logistical problem. What is it possible to do? Which piece of that problem can I uh, get to? So, for example, in the hydrology issue, <coughs> um, I basically looked at the, the geological map of the whole basin. And, of course, I'd already thought about the geological map from this problem. And I said, there's three kinds of places in the Amazon basin. There's that old craton, um, there's the, uh, what I call the central basin, that, that big trough in the middle, and the Andes. And they're all very different geologically. Therefore, they have different types of landscapes. So, you know, one will have slopes like this, and one will have slopes like this, and one will have slopes in the middle. Well, slope shape is an important part of runoff generation in hydrology. And then they'll have different kinds of soils. There are only three kinds of soils in the Amazon, I said, right? Um, very old, sort of old, and very young. So the next thing that translates into is let's go and make uh, hydraulic measurements uh, at a number of sediments, uh, the number of sampling sites in each of those three locations. And then, you know, we've got three sets of data, start making calculations. Are there any big differences? But it's, it's like that. You start with a very big issue. Maybe hard to do in Europe because it's more complicated. The Amazon is a base as a basin, it's pretty simple. So it has not been disturbed by glaciation. Um, and the differences in different parts of the Amazon are of the slope and um, I mean what the slope it's it's order of magnitude, right? The tangent in the Andes is like point no, it's not it's point yeah, point seven, point eight and uh, it's point oh one down on the, on the flatlands. And the lengths of the hill slopes are a kilometer um, in the, on the 
craton, and they're 300 meters in the central basin. And uh, soil depths are, you know, in the Andes, um, maybe uh, 50 to 70 centimeters, and on the uh, on the craton, they're uh, 8 to 10 meters. So the big big order of magnitude differences um, help you, I think. To, so it's a long answer, but I mean that's what I start with cartoons. And uh, uh, re regarding the amount of financial support that such a big, a big project uh, need to have, uh, how much is it, it costs? Well, okay, so again, this is a logistical issue. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, for a short time, I was the head of this project, and I hated it. I, I only took it over because the guy who was the head ran into trouble with the funding agency, and the funding agency said, get rid of this guy put somebody else in. So I have always tried to avoid organizing the funding. That means then, the, the, my logistical problem is to say, how can I attach myself to a project that wants something that I'm interested in? Uh, I want to work on the Amazon hydraulic deforestation, because Liz wanted to. So I approached the people who were doing hydrology and said, we have something to offer for you. So that, I don't take responsibility for for getting the resources. I, I don't, I never have, I always go to work on somebody else's project basically. But that said, I would say that the, the sediment transport uh, carbon thing, it costs um, half a million dollars a year on average. But so, yeah. No, another reason I didn't want to organize it. <laughs> so basically, in that particular case, they paid for my graduate student, Lael, Yeah. And they paid for my travel, and they provided the equipment. You know, I worked for free. I'm still working for free. Yeah, but still, is a a huge amount of money that has to come to come somewhere from. Yeah. Yeah. And also, the, the thing that makes the, this kind of work even <coughs> more unattractive than the money is um, the agreements with foreign governments which is getting increasingly difficult. So when I first started working in Africa, just after independence, it was, we could go anywhere and do anything, you know? And so we did. Uh, but now, you have to have agreements and stacks of paper, and you know, if, if the, the guy who's there that day doesn't like you, he'll tell you no. So I, I try to avoid it. Uh, that's why I like to have a, a, a Principal investigator who's taking care of all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, may, maybe now I am the senior in charge here, so well, I thank you very much You're welcome. for having me. Thank you for listening. It was really very interesting, and uh, I, I hope that you stay here some uh, some days to discuss maybe well, no, some other. I have to be on a train with my wife. Ah. They're going to be lunch tomorrow. Ah, uh, that. That's a pity. I'm staying here the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank okay, you I'm very much. I'm very interested in talking if, if you're interested we'll in, in a few minutes of your time. Thank you. Anyway, thank, thank you very much. Thank you.